Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Liz Margolis. I'm the Executive Director of Student and School Safety, and I am involved in our bond planning team. With us today is Jill Minnick, our Assistant Superintendent of Finance and Operations, Emil Lozano, who's our Executive Director of Capital Projects, Andrew Cluley, who's already done his introductions, he's our Director of Communications, and Jason Bing, who's our Construction Project Auditor. You're gonna hear a little bit from all of us today. Um, there is gonna be an opportunity at the end um, to, there's also an opportunity for Q&As uh, um, as we go through this, as Andrew pointed out, and, and then at the end, we have something called thought exchange where we're gonna ask your opinions about what our presentation on the bond plan bond plan at this point is so we can get started. Just a quick overview of what our presentation today is going to be. Um, we're gonna review our bond campaign commitments. We're gonna look at phase one bond plan, um, some of our early construction projects, summer construction, staging facility construction, major construction projects and supports um, for our infrastructure. We're gonna look at a map of our staging plan and major construction projects. Investment timelines by sector and level, and also we're going to look at the implementation of our bond and sinking fund dollars at work. Environmental sustainability is a big part of this plan, so we're going to dive into that a bit, and we're going to talk about our communication, community engagement, and our next steps. As a reminder, um, the Ann Arbor Public School District serves not only the city of Ann Arbor, we have eight surrounding townships that we touch covering 125 square miles, serving about 18,000 children. We're responsible for 35 buildings with an average age of 65 years, 3.4 million square feet of property, and 723 acres across all of our neighborhoods. So AAPS does obviously promote our quality education. Inclusiveness for all children is one of our foremost um, commitments to this community. Um, we want our students performing at academically high levels. High performing teachers are very key to the success of our students academically. Access to quality programs. And then of course we have a very supportive um, community and parents most definitely. We're gonna review a little bit of our 2019 bond campaign commitments. We uh, prepared for our future with the bond um, 2019 bond campaign as we divided up into four quadrants of, of basic areas that we were addressing in this bond campaign, teaching and learning, safety, health, and well-being, sustainability and environmentally responsible infrastructure, and efficient and effective support systems and services. And let's dive into that just a little bit more. I'm not gonna obviously go through all of this. This is all available on our website. But under our teaching and learning goal, we really want to support flexible and engaging learning environments. That is one of our key themes, as well as expanding some of our really successful applied programs such as STEAM, CTE, coding, and robotics. Um, uh, this all requires supportive infrastructure. So it, in, it requires upgrades to our classrooms, including our lighting, our thermal, our acoustical, and our air quality environments as well as providing spaces and equipment and furnishings for our very valued arts programs. The next goal of safety, health, and well-being is really about focusing our development on the whole child. One of my special uh, areas that I always attend to is the safe and secure schools um, for all of our children and our community, and we want them to be centers of the community. We also want to provide um, opportunities for in students to engage in a variety of different ways, including our gardens and our food production, and then enhance our food security for our vulnerable, vulnerable populations, which we actually have done during this pandemic. Um, even though it's not something we you know, want, none of us wanted to engage in, we have been able to go out and serve over a million meals um, to our vulnerable, vulnerable populations. Our supporting infrastructures, well, that's fine, we'll go on. Um, I'll just, yeah, we'll go on to the next goal, which is sustainability and environmentally responsible infrastructures. Again, this is about the climate that our students learn in and optimizing that learning environment um, based on best practices, including things like light and fresh air. Um, we are gonna be renovating all of our classrooms um, into a modern system that provides great thermal and lighting for our students. We are, as you many of you know, installing solar energy right now through our um, many of our schools. And we're creating really good spaces for our students to not only 
work in, but learn in and support sustainable and environmentally responsible principles. Efficient and effective support systems and services. This is about technology and transportation replacement. Um, we wanna make sure that our students continue to have the best technology um, that can help them in their, achieve their individual goals. And then of course, we wanna continue doing our regular laptop replacements, um, as well as our uh, state-of-the-art art classrooms and classroom devices. Um, our media centers are gonna start taking on a new look. And then of course, we have our support services, such as our custodial or informa uh, information technology and our bus fleet, continual replacement. So we have excellent bus fleet, including what we've taken recently, our, our new electric buses. Oh, okay, well, I'm gonna hand it off now to Emil and he's gonna talk about our bond phases. Thank you, Liz. Um, and all of what Liz overviewed in, in great detail is available on our website. And those, what she just overviewed, were all part of the promises uh, made on the campaign uh, leading up to the referendum and successful passage of the 2019 bond. And I'm pleased to be here today with my colleagues to present um, the first 10 years of the bond program that was approved by the board in December. And we're here today making sure everyone gets an update and understands what is happening over the next uh, 10 years of the bond program. Um, we're gonna review uh, several areas, early construction projects, summer construction projects, uh, the construction of staging facilities, uh, what we are calling major construction projects that will be happening at every school in AAPS over the next 20 years, and support infrastructure uh, furnishings and equipment such as uh, to support music, athletics, and other special programs. Um, early projects are happening in every school with a focus on, on equity. So making sure that all of our schools have access to the same level of amenities and, and uh, comfort in their buildings. So this includes solar energy, air conditioning, and air quality improvements at those buildings that do not have air conditioning, uh, LED lighting, uh, bringing that across the district, outdoor learning enhancement, something that has taken uh, a special meaning over the last year, uh, music arts and science and small group and special needs learning spaces, as well as the continuing uh, maintenance of our basic infrastructure in the music uh, area, busing, and things like roofing, paving, and stormwater management. Um, intermediate summer projects are those kinds of projects that we can complete in about 10 weeks over the uh, summer while the school is unoccupied. And this is a couple of examples um, of that. Recently at Bryant Elementary and also Patton Gill, we did summer renovations. And on the, on the right, there is Pioneer High School uh, cafeteria, which was in need of um, some updating. And we were able to do that in, in the 10 weeks of summer. Um, staging schools are critical to the success of this program. Uh, staging schools are locations where uh, elementary school programs can be relocated for one school year while deep work is done at their home school. Um, in many cases, our buildings being an average age of 65 years old, we cannot complete the work that needs to be done at these locations in the 10 weeks of summer. It's not technically or financially viable to do it that way. And so we are constructing um, staging locations that will serve as a relocation home for uh, elementary schools over the first 10 years of the bond program. Major projects are really the heart of this program. Um, this is when we're able to do the deep work at a school and uh, either replace a school in its entirety or renovate and do additions to a program. Um, and this is where we can do things like uh, create electric sustainable uh, schools, opportunities to engage the community in the design process. And in the evaluation of whether to replace or renovate a school, we have a number of things that we'll be looking at with our community. Implications on the academic program is a big one. Uh, many of our schools have been added on to over uh, many years and they're spread out and things and adjacencies and programmatic elements that you would hope are near to each other and are right sized often are not. We have very small kitchens, for instance, that limit our ability to cook food on site at our elementary schools. 
that's a program implication in terms of the health of our uh, cafeteria program. We have undersized, um, many of our gymnasiums and other support infrastructure might be undersized. Some of our classrooms are very small. Those are all academic program implications that we'll be looking at in that evaluation. Of course, the cost of renovating versus uh, the cost of operating a building. A, a renovated building is going to cost more to operate than a brand new building. will have a lower operating cost, but may cost more initially to construct. Um, impacts on health, well-being, and universal access is another consideration. Many of our older buildings are what you would call a split-level design, so it's a staircase. You essentially uh, have to go upstairs to enter the building, and we have these elaborate ramps that bring uh, people with mobility challenges into the building. That's something that is difficult to remedy in a renovation, but certainly something that in a new construction is easy to manage. And of course, uh, environmental sustainability, including the embodied carbon value of our existing buildings and the operating carbon uh, emissions that uh, our buildings would have post major project. So uh, the question of which schools goes first was something that we have spent a long time looking at. And uh, some of the main prioritization considerations include the capital needs of the existing buildings, uh, matriculation, making sure that we don't uh, disrupt a student multiple times during the bond program. So they're not under renovation in the fifth grade and then they go to middle school and they're in renovation again. And then finally they go to high school and they're displaced or uh, made uh, disrupted by construction a third time. So matriculation is a consideration. And then housing development and anticipated enrollment growth pressures at the various schools is another consideration. So looking at capital needs, uh, we had a outside experts, engineers and architects evaluate every one of our buildings in late 2018 and early 2019. And the, they, uh, the chart that you see here is the amount of investment per square foot that is needed in each of our buildings over the next 10 years to maintain them in a good condition. So you'll see on the left are all of the elementary and K-8 schools, and you'll see Carpenter Elementary School at $283 per square foot in investment needs over the next 10 years. Um, and then followed by Mitchell, Dickin, Burns Park, and Wines, and on down the list. And you'll see the highest level of need is at the elementary school, follow, followed by the high school level, with community and pathways at 176 and 175. And then finally, the middle schools having the lowest level of need in the conditions assessment from a financial investment standpoint. Looking at matriculation, um, and given that the elementary schools need the most work in the school district, the program begins with the elementary schools. Um, and then uh, in order to minimize the uh, matriculation uh, impacts of the construction program. Uh, the bond program skips over middle schools and then goes to high schools uh, la uh, next, and then finally middle schools at the end of the program, thereby uh, not disrupting students as much as if we had have gone to the middle school second, um, but also recognizing that middle schools thereby come late in the program. We are uh, mobilizing some early projects at all five middle schools. Uh, that construction is underway currently um, at uh, Scarlet and Tappan Middle Schools. We'll be receiving air, school wide air conditioning and ventilation improvements, new lights and ceilings, and some custom uh, needs on a school by school basis. Uh, this will happen next at uh, Clegg and Forsyth, and the, the middle school mobilization concludes with. Slauson uh, starting in 2023. Um, that's to bring the middle schools. Uh, if anybody's been to the third floor of Tappan in, um, in May and June, you'll know that this is sorely needed. Uh, these schools uh, overheat significantly and this addition of air conditioning uh, will be a, a great improvement for these programs as well as the increased ventilation and air quality that this will provide. Um, the final uh, major consideration is the 
pressure of housing growth and new students to our buildings. This is um, a housing development study. Um, you'll see the items in yellow are currently under construction housing developments in the city of Ann Arbor. Um, the, the shaded parts are the different elementary school attendance boundaries. Um, and the green uh, shaded areas are housing developments that are under planning review currently. Um, and this is bringing a lot of pressure on certain areas. You'll see, for instance, in the Northeast sector, you'll see the pressure happening here in the Logan area with a number of Northeast, Northeast developments um, that will need to, uh, will bring lots of students to our district, which is great, but we need places to put them and beautiful schools for them to attend. Um, as Liz mentioned, uh, we do serve uh, beyond the city of Ann Arbor. So the kind of red heart shaped piece in the middle here, that's, that's the city of Ann Arbor. The white shaded area is the AAPS attendance boundary that stretches out into many of the surrounding townships. Um, most of our schools, with the exception of Pittsfield, are inside of the city of Ann Arbor. Pitts, I'm sorry, Carpenter School sits just outside of this uh, city of Ann Arbor boundary sitting in Pittsfield Township. We're going to kind of zoom into this, this uh, black box here to look at the staging plan. So in order to complete the major construction projects at the various schools, we do need to stage school communities. And so we'll look at the Southeast sector here and uh, the in yellow and this Southeast uh, sort of circle here is the current Mitchell and the new Mitchell, which the board recently approved the design contract for the design of a new Mitchell Elementary School, which will be constructed on the site of the existing Mitchell School while the existing Mitchell it remains occupied. Once the new school is completed, the Mitchell program will move to their new building and the old Mitchell School will serve as a staging location for a number of years. Uh, and the first school that would stage through uh, Mitchell, the old Mitchell School would be Burns Park, followed by Angel, and Pittsfield and closing uh, that sector up with Pattongill would uh, relocate for a year so that the deep work can be completed at their home schools. Um, some other schools we feel don't need to stage in order to complete the major project and that includes Bryant, Allen and Carpenter in this sector. You'll see the same uh, strategy in the Northeast sector with Logan, then King and Thurston staging through the staging location. Uh, the Southwest sector and the Northwest sector. And we'll look at that in a little more detail. Again, this is all available on the website. Don't feel like you have to squint and try to read all of this. Uh, this is sort of the overall plan for the bond. The first 10 years uh, are shaded in color. And then after that is in gray, the board did approve the first 10 years of this plan. Of course, there will be adjustments. Uh, things do change over 10 years, but this is the trajectory and the, and the direction that the team is headed at this time. You'll see uh, the lighter shaded uh, yellow and green projects at each school. Those are the earlier mobilization, summer projects, early projects at every school. And then the darker blue, those are the major projects. And we'll just kind of zoom in. This is the Southeast sector, Northeast, Southwest and Northwest elementaries, and then the K-8s secondary schools and other buildings. And we'll just briefly look at each of these sectors. Again, this detail is available on the website and we'll share the direct link at address at, at the end of the presentation. So here you can see the Southeast sector, which we kind of used as an example of the construction of the new Mitchell Elementary at the bottom here with the, with the kind of bright blue new construction. Once that facility is completed, um, Burns Park Elementary will relocate to the current Mitchell School, followed by Angel, Pittsfield, and finally Pattongill will stage through the old or the current Mitchell building. And in the green and the yellow, you see those early projects bringing things like air conditioning, lighting, paving, roofing, solar energy, and outdoor learning enhancements. Uh, here is the Northeast sector. This is a tricky part of town for us. It's seen a lot of growth and uh, there is very little available land in the Northeast sector. And so this year we are conducting a study of the Northeast sector to bring some options to the Board of Education 
in terms of how we manage uh, construction at the three elementary schools in that sector. Southwest sector, uh, same uh, thing, construction of a, a staging location, various schools staged through and the early projects at each school. And the Northwest sector and the K-8s, uh, A2 STEAM and Ann Arbor Open, um, the same project. Here you start to see these light blue boxes. These are intermediate summer projects. Uh, these are introduced given that they're the major projects for this sector of town are so far out. We've included earlier mobilizations to um, make sure that those schools uh, stay in great operational condition. Uh, this is the middle schools. You'll see in, in kind of bright green, those early renovations at the middle schools. And in gray, kind of sketched in here in the distance are the major projects at those uh, middle schools. Um, with the early renovations that include air conditioning, lighting, and other critical projects at each of those middle schools. And the high schools, um, we're really excited about a major project early on at Pathways, uh, which is, again, the board has also approved the design contract for that project, and we're just at the very beginning of that program. Um, Community High School, is receiving the same air conditioning updates as the middle schools. Um, it does not currently have uh, air conditioning throughout the building and it is a three-story historic building and it gets quite, quite uncomfortable in that building um, in the shoulder months. And then we can see uh, some initial summer projects and then the major projects out in the distance about 10 years away at the high school level once the elementaries are completed. And then some of our other buildings um, the preschool building, uh, the Freeman Environmental Education Center, the transportation building, and the ballast building. We're looking at our central office operations. Uh, we've had a, a year plus of remote operations, and like many businesses and other office environments, we're evaluating what do we really need as an office? How can we leverage some of the things that we've learned through this COVID time to make our operations more efficient? Um, and so we're, we're, we'll be conducting a utilization study of the offices at Ballas and how we can make ourselves more uh, accessible to the public and also make our operations more um, efficient. And continuing investment in things like um, buses, music, arts, et cetera. And I think I'm gonna hand it over to Jill here, who's gonna talk a little bit about the financial side of all this. Thank you, Emil. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. All the projects that Emil just reviewed are supported by the bond millage. However, Ann Arbor Public Schools has been investing in critical upgrades to buildings and sites over the past number of years uh, with the renewal of the sinking fund millage. But by layering in the passage of the bond, we are able to expand these efforts in even more meaningful and transformative ways to benefit our students with enhanced learning environments. We are extremely grateful for the support of our community we have already completed several projects and many are underway that uh, Jason will review uh, momentarily, but I did want to spend just a few minutes on how the sinking fund and the bond finances work and how they are two distinct millages and separate funding streams. And uh, just review just briefly how they dovetail together to support this work. So looking at the top three boxes in that chart there and reading along with the assumptions, uh, the sinking fund is a tax levy. It was renewed by voters in 2017, and funds are collected throughout the year as those taxes are remitted. Uh, with the graciousness and should we be so fortunate for our community to support two additional renewals, uh, the revenue support over the next 20 years then is projected to total $613 million. That's the sum of those first three line items there in the chart. Next, continuing down uh, with the bond millage approved by the voters in November of 2019, that allows the district to issue bonds, which are debt instruments. Uh, the district literally sells bonds and we use the proceeds to fund the projects. The millage tax dollars then uh, provide for the principal and interest payments on that debt. The district is only allowed to issue so much debt at a time, so we cannot sell all the bonds at once. We have to pay down the debt 
And then as we go along, then we can sell more series of bonds. And we intend to do this over uh, the course of four series of bonds. Uh, we sold the first series in 2020, and we anticipate doing so again in 2022, 2025, and 2029. And the total proceeds from those four issuances of bonds uh, will be $1 billion. The district will continue to, delight, to utilize the sinking fund for routine building and infrastructure repairs and replacements, and that averages about $8 million per year or $160 million over the course of the 20 years of this bond program. So by layering in the sinking fund and the bond dollars in a strategic way, we are able to invest about $1.45 billion in these projects over the course of the 20 years. Uh, just one last note, I want to emphasize that state statute prohibits bond proceeds from being used for salaries, benefits, and other general operating expenses. And likewise, we're also prohibited, prohibited from using sinking fund dollars for those things, but also uh, from using them for equipment, such as school buses or food service equipment or student desks and chairs. Um, but also, these sinking fund and bond expenditures are audited each year and reported to the state of Michigan. So enough on financing. I will turn it over to Jason Bing to review the recent projects we have completed as well as projects underway and planned for future years. Thank you, Ms. Fennick. Uh, so the capital projects team is very excited to be implementing the bond plan, uh, but we're also really proud of the work we've started through the sinking fund over the last couple of years. We've made some significant investments uh, district-wide to improve or create healthier environments for our students and staff. Uh, we've added over 200 filtered water bottle filling stations, made hands-free and touchless separation improvements. We've enhanced ventilation and filtration upgrades uh, to the HVAC equipment to improve air quality. Made some critical infrastructure upgrades, including our building management system. Uh, we've updated parking lots. I made repairs to stormwater systems. We've replaced synthetic turf fields and running tracks at our major high school facilities. We've added modular classrooms um, when necessary. We've uh, focused on the last couple of years uh, with some performance um, and enhancements at cl for classrooms at Bryant and Pattengale Elementary Schools. And with each of these projects and those not even reflected here, we've had an eye towards environmental sustainability, um, and I'll highlight a couple of those projects here in the next couple slides. So as we've um, been making improvements at our facilities to Bryant and Pattengale Elementary, we really focused on increasing the overall performance of these schools uh, at Bryant uh, in particular. <clears throat> we wanted to, in, to improve the health and comfort of our classrooms. So we upgraded um, to high efficiency LEDs. We increased access to daylight and created views to nature, which didn't previously exist. Um, we enhanced user controls and upgraded our building automation system. Over this past summer and fall, we've added four new electric buses and the charging infrastructure to support that those buses. Uh, this effort was funded uh, in large part from EGLE and the VW Settlement Funds and a DTE pilot program. Uh, we're really excited to learn more uh, through this pilot program and, and possibly catch a glimpse of clean energy transportation in the future for AAPS. Um, we've had a pretty exciting rooftop solar array program uh, that's kicked off here. We've followed our major uh, rooftop replacements, uh, major rooftop upgrades with the rooftop solar arrays. And by the end of 2021, we'll have uh, installed large scale arrays at Pattengale, Hazley, A2 Steam, Forsyth Middle, Huron High, and Bryant Elementary Schools. Uh, this will give us nearly one megawatt of rooftop solar capacity, which produces enough clean energy to offset the carbon emissions equivalent to over 160 homes of annual electricity usage. And we have more on the way. Um, digging into the bond plan implementation, as Mio mentioned, uh, the early work begins with air conditioning and lighting improvements. That work starts this summer, 2021. 
uh, Angel, Burns Park, Carpenter, Dickon, Lakewood, and Mitchell will also receive new air conditioning, dimmable LED lighting, enhanced controls, and some cosmetic improvements to both ceilings and windows. Uh, we are <clears throat> making some significant HVAC improvements, high performance upgrades to both heating and cooling systems at Scarlet and Tappan Middle Schools, as well as Community High School, adding dimmable LED lighting, enhanced HVAC and lighting controls, and we're making, uh, as Samil mentioned, custom as needed uh, classroom improvements as well. Uh, these AC and lighting projects will be followed by another uh, series. In 2022, we had five more elementary schools, Allen, Ba, Eber, White, Pittsfield, Wines, uh, Jump to Clegg Middle School and Forsyth Middle School and Pioneer High School. In 2023, we'll be tackling the K-8s, Ann Arbor Open and A2 Steam, Lawton Elementary School, Thurston and Slauson Middle School. And we'll wrap up our AC and lighting projects in 2024 with work at Abbott, Paisley, King, Logan, and Huron High. Our major projects, as Emil mentioned, are set to begin construction in 2022. Um, these are the projects with goals and criteria outlined in Mr. Lauzana's presentation. Um, we begin with Pathways to Success uh, and uh, follow that with a new Mitchell Elementary School, which creates our first staging school in 2023. And that will allow us to begin work at Burns Park and Dickin in 2024. And we'll follow that with work at Angel, Carpenter, Lakewood, Logan, and a new Southwest Staging School all in 2025 with major projects. And one of the things I appreciate the most about working with AAPS is our commitment to environmental sustainability. And the board, the bond plan really uh, builds upon the board policy 8000 uh, adopted in December of 2018, uh, in which the Ann Arbor Public Schools recognizes that climate change is real, increasing and caused by human activity. And the district supports the prioritization of environmental sustainability education, developing student leaders, maintaining efficient district buildings and grounds, and enhancing partnerships in the community. Some of the key themes and areas of consideration for the 2019 bond and environmental sustainability include human-centric design, this is maximizing the health and well-being of our students and staff, net zero energy ready design, uh, considering both embodied and operational carbon, uh, utilizing tools such as life cycle analysis and environmental product declarations and evaluating design decisions, and developing an AAPS specific sustainable design guideline with the advisement of the Environmental Sustainability Task Force. Human-centric design is really important to the core mission of the district. Um, and it's because there's a growing body of research that's connecting improved student health in academic facilities to improved student cognitive function, which then can lead to better outcomes in the classroom. This research highlights a number of environmental factors which influence these student outcomes. And if you can imagine in your own academic experience, uh, possibly sitting in a classroom and hearing a rattling fan in the background or the humming of some system that you can't quite uh, make out, it can serve as a distraction. Um, there are steps we can take to uh, improve these environments. Um, perhaps you had an environment where you uh, were sleepy or um, you're too close to a, a drafty window. And, you know, all these factors um, now are validated uh, through research. Um, we can improve uh, the conditions of our classrooms by creating healthier, high performance facilities and address the um, differences with, um, with our students by creating more quality environments so that they can better think and learn. Uh, one of the cornerstones of our bond plan in charting a course to carbon neutrality is net zero energy and zero energy ready design in our major projects. The opportunity to achieve significant carbon foot reductions 
Um, really, we'll do this by maximizing efficiency and reducing our overall energy consumption to the point where we can offset our energy consumption through solar production and other and or other clean energy offsets. And finally, AAPS is developing a sustainable design guideline, which will serve as a summary um, of our performance targets and goals. Uh, so that we'll develop this guideline with the assistance of professional consultants. Uh, we'll review, this document will be reviewed by the Bond Advisory Committee and Environmental Sustainability Task Force, and it will be submitted to architecture and engineering design teams to guide major projects. The design guidelines will include both project level guidelines and district level guidelines and goals and utilize and reference uh, best practice sustainable design rating systems. Um, it'll, it will include topic areas uh, which range from design concepts and strategy through design process into building systems and all the way through education and operations. Um, and with that, I will wrap and turn it back over to Ms. Margolis. Thank you, Jason. Um, we want to just talk briefly about our communication of the bond and how we're going to engage our community. So our community stakeholders will have many different opportunities to learn about our phase one bond, which is our 2020-2030, and to provide us with really important feedback. Um, we are doing our community organiza organization presentations now, as well as public um, presentations. We'll move into some topical presentations and then today we are introducing our thought exchange and this is going to be our tool for feedback um, that the community can offer to us. We are going to be forming a bond advisory committee um, as and it will um, take on members, um, not only internal from the district, but our external community members and parents and staff. We are going to also be forming right now actually an environmental sustainability task force. School design committees will be um, put together for every major school project. So both the staff, parents, the community members that live in that school area will all have the opportunity to be part of the school design um, teams. We are also going to be introducing a dedicated website, um, a2schoolsbond.org, which we'll be able to link to from our district website um, that will contain all of our updates and information on every single bond project that we will be um, involved in. And then of course, we will be doing lots of communication through our Board of Education meetings. This is just a little snapshot um, of our website, which is under development, but will be um, out fairly soon. And it will be um, a way for the community to track our bond improvements. We'll be doing financial reports. Um, we will be doing project updates. All of our bond information reports will be posted here. And it will be um, a place where we store our information about bidding on the um, construction projects that will be done throughout the bond. Our bond advisory committee, um, the purpose is really to engage our community members and organizations in a process to help inform um, our AAPS professional team. Um, it will also be responsible for helping communicate our bond updates to the community, and it will be help us establish and enhance our partnerships within our community. We have two levels. We have, again, we discussed our bond advisory committee, which will include key staff members, professional partners, community members, and our board of education liaisons. And then again, as I mentioned, we will have individual school design committees that will be formed at each school for every major project. Our next steps. Um, you can see where the check marks are. These are already accomplished, um, starting with our 2018-19 when we did our facilities assessment um, through our board approval of the phase one 2020 bond plan that occurred in December of 2020. Um, we are now working on um, updating our APS community and looking for feedback and forming our bond advisory committee. And then this summer and fall, um, we'll be doing some reports to the board on the community feedback and our bond advisory committee will begin its meetings. Today, um, we are asking participants in our um, presentation to use our thought exchange tool. The link is on the bottom. Um, we have asked three questions. 
what most excites you about the AAPS bond plan, what new information did you learn from our presentation today, and what questions and concerns do you have about the plan. This is a great way to share your expertise, your thoughts, um, what you like, what you don't like about the bond plan, so that we can then further fine tune and respond to our community and report this information to the Board of Education. We will also use this information to form our FAQs um, that will be posted on our bond website. So please, at the end of this, visit the link below, which is our thought exchange link for this presentation. We are done with our presentation for now. We will be coming back to the community many times throughout this bond program to continue our reports. And as always, we are always open for questions um, and concerns, as well as anything that you see that may be looking great in our community and you want us to con continue doing. So we thank everyone today for joining us. We hope you'll go to the Thought Exchange and give us your feedback. Thank you. And a reminder, if you have an immediate question, uh, the Q&A button down at the bottom is where you can uh, submit that question. Can we go back one slide to show that thought exchange link again so that uh, people can see it? Yep, there we go. So if you have any questions, please enter them now. Well, it doesn't look like we have any questions at this time. So we just ask that people go visit that thought exchange and participate um, that way. And uh, since we don't have any other questions at this time, I think we'll uh, close the meeting. So thank you all for attending.